Right. Need to hear myself. Hallelujah. Sometimes, if we can make any type of, there we go. I think I'm hearing myself a little bit better. Glory. I like to hear myself. How about you? Glory to God. <laughs> Did you know, since I'm on that, that you're your best faith teacher? Don't shout me down because I'm preaching real good. <laughs> you know, David encouraged himself in the Lord. I think we need to stand and just encourage ourselves just a little bit right now. Start rejoicing right now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Woo! Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Lord, you're so good. 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 You're so good to us, Lord. You're so good to each and every one of us. There's no one like you. There's no God beside you. You are the true and living God. And you are our God. You are our God and our Father. And today, Lord, we strengthen ourselves in you. We renew ourselves in you. We encourage ourselves in you. We dance in you. We run in you. We praise in you. We sing in you. We rejoice in you today, Lord. We rejoice in you today, Lord. Today, Father God, we stir up the gift that is within us. We stir up the power of God. We stir up the love of God. We stir up a sound mind. Thank you, Father, that you've not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Can you say that with me? Say, thank you, Father, thank you, Father that you have not given us, given us the, spirit the spirit of fear, but of power. And of love and of, love. And of, a, sound of a sound mind. Today, Lord, Today, Lord I, remember I remember you are with me. You are, with me. You are, in, me. You are in me. You are for me. Are for me. And if God be for me, be for me. Who, who can be against me? Lord, you said, Lord, you, said you will never leave me, never leave nor me. forsake me. That I may boldly say, the Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Lord, you are my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. One more time. Lord, you are my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Why don't you shout just a little bit right now. Glory to God! Hallelujah! 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 Do you believe that this morning? Do you believe that He's with you? Do you believe that He's in you? Do you believe that He's for you? Then reach out and love on somebody this morning and tell them, He's with me. He's with you. He's in you. He's for you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, glory to God. Oh, the glory's here, church. The glory's here. The glory's here. Say it with me. Say, the glory's here. Say, His glory is here. Hallelujah. Let's do something right now, church. We're going to do, we're going to do three, three more. We're going to make three more confessions this morning before we get into the word. Say, Lord, you are good. And your mercy endures forever. Lord, you are good. And your mercy endures forever. One more time and say it like you mean it. Lord, you are good. And your mercy endures forever. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you're good. Today, Words of Life gives you thanks, Father. Today, Words of Life praises you. Today, Words of Life worships you. Today, we worship you, Father, in spirit and in truth. And we thank you for your glory in manifestation. We thank you for your manifested presence, your manifested power, your manifested goodness today in all of our lives. 
And we pray that if there's anyone here who does not know you yet as Lord and Savior, that they receive you today in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, good morning, church. Let's say this scripture together. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Well, guess what you need to do right now? Hallelujah, glory to God. Woo! Did you know rejoicing is an act of the will? Sometimes people are trying to feel it. Sometimes you might feel it. But that's not how it's activated. It's activated by choice. It's activated by a decision. Today, I will rejoice in the Lord. Your will is much more powerful than you know. And God, did you know that he will not even violate the human will? So many times people want Father God to do this and do this and do this and do this, but he needs your will involved. So, Father, we give you our will this morning. We yield our will to you. We say we will, Lord. We will do exactly what you want us to do. We will go exactly where you want us to go. We will say exactly what you want us to say. Today, we hear the voice of our good shepherd, and a stranger we will not follow. Today, we are led by the Spirit of God. So thank you, Holy Ghost for leading us in this service this morning. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, let me make this announcement as well before we get into the Word this morning. Um, We'd like to see more of you on Wednesday night. I'm just being honest with you right now. Because Wednesday night is midweek service. And I just want to encourage you to do your best to come to Wednesday night as much as you can. I mean, I know that we have personal schedules and things like that, but, but church, I want to tell you, there's something that happens on Wednesday night that sometimes doesn't happen on Sunday mornings. And if you can be here, I'm encouraging you, I'm encouraging you to begin to, to join us on Wednesday nights. Wednesday night is more of a teaching night. And how many of you know we need teaching? Now we're open to whatever God wants to do in every service. But I'm, I want to encourage you all, and I'm I'm speaking this from my heart, because my wife is going to be ministering part two of a series that she started last week. And I'm not telling you to be here just because she's ministering. I'm telling you because I'm looking at, and I'm going to be honest with you. I'm looking at, and how many of you know I love you? Uh Uh-oh, maybe the Holy Ghost is just trying to get something across to us today. Because I'm going to tell you something, church. One meal doesn't cut it. I'm going to ask God right now for something. Father, I thank you for your utterance today. I thank you for your boldness today. And I thank you for your anointing today. In Jesus' name, amen. Church, the Bible says that we're not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. There was a minister by the name of F.F. Bosworth that said something along these lines. He said, we feed ourselves, and please understand the spirit of what I'm about to say and the essence of what I'm about to say. He said, we feed ourselves, feed ourselves one, one, and he used the word, one cold snack a week. Well, how many of you know we feed a hot snack here? Glory to God. Hallelujah. (laughs) But he was talking about the church in general. Now, remember, F.F. Bosworth came out of the 18th and 19th well, I think in the 19th century to be exact, and even in in the 20th century. But he wrote a book called Christ the Healer. 
And I wasn't intending on saying this. I was, this was not in my, didn't even think about it. This, this, was not, this is not any preconceived thought. But he was saying, Christians wonder why their faith is weak. Maybe I could say it better this way. When they only feed themselves maybe one cold snack or one meal a week. Did you all hear what I just said? You see, just that little, you see, understand what I'm trying to say right now. We need to feed ourselves seven days a week. And then we wonder, I only come to church on Sunday. Or, there's a group that might only come on Wednesday, but they don't come on Sunday. And then, there's a group, boy, I didn't know I was going to say all this, glory to God. But then, there's a group that only comes once a month. Oh, don't shut me down now. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. But folks, as we learned last week at Word of His Power Conference, you and I need to take ownership. You and I need to be people of prayer. You and I must expect His greater glory. You and I have a part to play in that greater glory. And you and I have to learn how to usher in that greater glory. And then you and I, as the prophet told us, have to attend to his words, incline our ear unto his sayings. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Why? For they are life unto those who find them and health to all their flesh. And the prophet enlarged the message as he ministered and said that our path is bright. Turn with me, if you would, to Proverbs chapter 4, uh, to Proverbs chapter 4, please. So this Wednesday night, I want to encourage you all to be here. But not just this Wednesday night. No matter who's ministering, whether it's me, my family, Pastor Marcus, Brother Barry, David Galloway. Yes, Brother David, I may call on you. Hallelujah. <laughs> John Jones. Balky, Dr. Dan, Eugene Bennett, and just because I call your name doesn't mean I'm going to do it, okay, I just want you to know that, okay? <laughs> but what I'm saying is, we all have to be ready. You see, because God wants to use each and every one of us in these last days. But let's look at this just for a moment. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18 says, But the path of the just is as the shining light. Say, my path, my path. is as the shining light, the shining light. that shines more and more Unto the perfect day. Hallelujah. There's a perfect day coming, my brothers. A perfect day. Jesus is coming soon. And we all need to be ready. And the prophet said that the path of the just is as the shining light. It shineth more and more unto the perfect day. And what was the prophet actually saying to us? 
He was actually saying everything that God said to us through the word of God. And so what am, I, what am I saying to everybody in this room who's a believer, who's a member of Words of Life? Take advantage of all the services that we have here. Come on Friday night to Friday night prayer. If you have, if you have Friday morning open and nothing's going on and you want to learn more about healing, come to healing school. When, you, when we have what we call word and fellowship classes here at Words of Life and we do that on Sunday mornings and have been for quite a while if you need help in your marriage come to the marriage class under the direction of David and Josie Galloway if you're over the age of 55 come and hear Pastor Marcus as he ministers to the Oasis group the Oasis group means older adults Anybody over 55 here? Raise your hand if you're over 55. I want all the 55ers to stand up. Hallelujah. Come on now. Woo! Glory to God. Pastor Marcus, would this be a nice size classroom? Yeah. It would be. We encourage you to come. Hear what... Pastor Marcus has to say to you from the Spirit of God. And then Brother Barry, is he in this group tonight or this morning? He might be in children's ministry. Brother Barry ministers to the singles. And it doesn't matter what your age, come and hear the word. What am I saying? There's more. There's more. There's more. There's more. God wants you and I to receive more. Here's why. So that we can give more. Today, you and I. Go ahead. You're only going to get more when you go after more. Yes. That's right. You're only going to get more when you go after more. So guess who we're going after? God. Hallelujah. We're going after Jesus today. We're going after Jesus tomorrow. We're going after the Holy Ghost today. We're going after the Holy Ghost tomorrow. We're going after our Father today. We're going after our Father tomorrow. We're going after them with all of our heart. Now here's the beautiful thing. They're in us. And today I'm going to just talk to you about who we are in Christ. Because you see, that's the platform upon which everything takes place. If you and I don't know who we are in Christ, what we have in Christ, what we can do in Christ then when we, be, we, will be lim, we will be living a limited life as a Christian. So let's get into the Word of God this morning. Are you ready? Hallelujah. Let me just share real fast, too, the title and why I'm so excited about my wife ministering. First of all, she's been filling herself up on this for weeks and weeks and weeks, even months and months and months. And the message that you'll conclude if you, did, if you weren't here last Wednesday is called How to Develop a Strong Spirit. Did you know that's our responsibility? And as Sister Gloria Copeland taught us on Friday morning, that you and I need to build ourselves up spiritually so that we can do everything he wants us to do and receive everything that he has for us and we do it with faith. 
And the only way that faith comes, it doesn't come by praying, even though a lot of people are praying for faith today. The Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So if you want to learn and if you want faith to learn how to build a strong spirit, then be here if you can this Wednesday night. And that's all I need to say about it. In Jesus' name, amen. Say this with me this morning as we move forward. Say, the path of the just just is as the shining light light that that shines more and more Unto the perfect day. day. Now lift your hands to heaven and say, And that's the path. path. I'm on by faith. faith. In Jesus' name. name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. There's a song, an old song, that we used to sing, that I used to sing. I went to a special Bible camp many, many years ago. Uh, It was a summer program, and this is where I, if I'm not mistaken, I learned this song, I heard this song, and it goes like this. But the path, oh, let's see, let's see, let's see. But the path of the righteous is like the light of dawn, it gets brighter, brighter and brighter. But the path of the righteous is like the light of dawn, it gets brighter. And I wanted to just sow that, I guess, into your heart and tell you that your path is getting brighter and brighter. Did you know that the entrance of God's word gives light? And there is more light for you and I to walk in every day. And that's why you and I have to be men and women of the word. Amen? How many men and women of the word do we have this morning? All right. Now, there's more to that song, but I couldn't remember it at the moment. Hallelujah. But I'll try to let the Holy Ghost bring it to my... <laughs> I won't... I won't well, no, I'm going to change that. I'm not going to try. I'm going to find out the words. Hallelujah. And maybe we'll start singing it around here. Because the path of the righteous is like the light of dawn. It gets brighter. Brighter and brighter, yes, the path of the righteous is like the light of dawn. It gets brighter. Hallelujah. Say, my path is getting brighter. Say, the plan is coming clearer. You see, God's got a plan, as the prophet told us. He's got a plan for every person in this room. He has a place for each and every one of us in this body, in the body of Christ. And let me say it another way. He has a place for each and every one of you in this church. He has a job. He has an assignment. He has a calling. He has a place. There are some in this room that need to be serving in the children's ministry. There are some in this room that need to be serving in the youth ministry. There are some in this room that need to be serving in the parking lot. There are some in this room that need to be serving uh, uh, in housekeeping. There are some in this room that need to be serving in landscaping. There are some in this room... That need to be serving in the youth ministry. Did I mention that one already? Glory to God. Well, we must need twice as much in the youth. Hallelujah. (laughs) Glory to God. There is some in this room that needs to be serving in the outreach ministries. Is Brother Tommy here? Tommy's not here today. All right. Out of state. I'll hold on to that. Hallelujah. 
Folks, what I'm trying to say right now with, with the Holy Spirit's help and what he's, try, what he's endeavoring to say through me is there's a place for you. Some of you have felt like there's no place. I mean, I, all I do is come. I sit in a chair. I don't do anything. I don't, no, no. There's a place. Be here on Friday nights for prayer. Some of you are called to pray. Some of us are called to intercede. In fact, a lot of people don't know this, but one of the highest ministries, if not the highest ministry, is the ministry of intercession. Now, I, I didn't say ministry of weird. I said ministry of intercession. And we have to learn what that means. Because sometimes, I'm going to just say it, sometimes intercessors can, if, if, if they don't follow the leadership, can get off and do, go, go all kinds of places that they shouldn't go. Woo, what a morning already. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But, no, 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 let's get this. Let's really un understand what, what I believe, what, what God's saying to us right now. I want you to look at every person, not every person, but look at the people that are next to you. Just for a moment. Just look at them. Just look at them for a moment. Okay? Does everybody look good? Okay. Praise the Lord. Good, because God may said everything he made was very good. Hallelujah. But there is a place. Now listen to this. Understand, there's a place for every one of you in this church some of us aren't serving yet and I'm going to say something too that's okay huh why would you say that pastor because you see we're still growing but I will say and I won't go into that because that's a whole nother message and maybe I, but just understand what I just said. But how many of you know God doesn't give the keys to the Rolls Royce to the 16 year old? Hallelujah. <laughs> Can I say it that way? <laughs> Who just got saved yesterday. <laughs> I hope you don't mind me saying that. Hallelujah. But I'm looking right now, I'm looking right now with Father's eyes, and I just want you to know, from Pastor Stan and Jerry's heart, from my heart, from Pastor Teresa's heart, from our family's heart, from the staff of Words of Life Fellowship Church, that there is a place for everybody the prophet came and told us again let's go there for a moment before we get into what I thought I was going to say hallelujah first Corinthians chapter 12 are y'all receiving something today is it helping you all right You see, as we move into these greater works, into, these great, into this greater glory, there's responsibility. How are we going to have a church of 5,000 kids if I only have five workers over there? And we have more than that. How, how are we going to minister to 10,000 youth if we only have 10 workers? How are we going to serve? Oh, I left the ministry out. There are ushers in this room. There are greeters in this room that need to hook up with Brother John and Miss Jerry Wells. Is Miss Jerry here this morning? Because you see, that is an awesome ministry. But let me just tell you too, one of the most awesome ministries here. It's the parking attendants. It's the ones who are outside that you first see that are meeting you with a great big smile. 
and saying, you are welcome in this place. They're the ones who actually help open the heart of the ones who are arriving for the very first time. They're the ones who say, we've got a great parking place for you right over here, right here, right here. And steer them in. These are the things that make for great ministry as God manifests his greater glory. Folks, words of life is growing. And for us to reach the masses, we're going to need a ministry of help in the masses. Because Brother John and his team and, brother, and Sister Jerry and her team and all the other teams, all the other teams are not supposed to carry the weight of the work. So we're going to be talking more about this in the future as we prepare to go forward in his greater glory. Are you with me, church? Are you with Pastor Stan and Jerry? Are you with us in the name of Jesus? Because I'm telling you, we are about ready to explode. Hallelujah. We are about ready to increase like you have never thought imaginable in the name of Jesus. You know why? Because it's harvest time. Dr. Dan needs more to go on the street with him. Glory to God. Man, I'm on this roll right now, and I just, I've got, I've got to find another wave. Hallelujah. Woo! I'm like a surfer. I'm, I'm surfing it till I can't surf it no more. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But let's look, and we'll, 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 we'll wrap it up. with. Wait, wait a minute here. Wait a minute here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I got an interesting, um, an interesting letter or email or whatever you want to call it from, um, from a woman in Oklahoma. And um, when Sister Gloria was preaching, I think it was Friday morning. Do you remember, honey, how she, she tried so hard to get there and she tried so hard <laughs> to go here? See, sometimes we've got our own plans. We have to just stop. What do you want said here this morning? What have you got on the agenda for Words of Life this morning? What does that congregation really need to hear this morning? Because I've got a plan. I've got a path for you to take. And if you don't get into those places to where... I need you to be. I can't fulfill my plan, says the Lord. And I watched her, and she tried desperately to go in certain ways because she knew that's what she was called and she was supposed to do that morning, but she couldn't, and she kept going the other way. Now, there was a, evidently a young Christian in Oklahoma who was hooked in that morning. And I want to thank her. Her name is Deborah. Deborah, if you're watching this morning, I want to thank you, honey, because you were so kind to say, I want Pastor Jerry to know how I appreciated her explaining to me what was going on in that service that morning <laughs> because... I could, I, I, I really got the, the, like the drift of it when she said, Gloria tried to go son, say something else, but God wouldn't let her. The Holy Ghost wouldn't let her. He had her say this. And so you opened my heart and my mind to really pay attention to what the Spirit of God is saying. And not be concerned that he's not getting to the message he's supposed to get. Or his notes are on there and he should be doing this. Or he's not doing that. Because I'm going to tell you something. I've been there in that 
position. And then when you're in that position, you're struggling. You're going, uh, 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 and it's pulling on you one way or another. And you almost try to form a word that you want to say and something else comes out. It's very true. Listen, you don't know what it's like till you're there. <laughs> Glory be to God. Praise, <laughs> Praise the Lord. So what they use to say, don't knock it unless you've been there. <laughs> Glory be to God. Anyway, you are so right on. So right on. Oh, it's just amazing. Because just in this past week, I have had consultations with with several with how shall, I won't get into it but just on this very subject and I have not spoken to him at all so what I'm trying to tell you church is pay attention to what God is saying to you today to us because now, this isn't good English. Usin. Usin is this church. Yes. And Usin wants to do what God wants to do yes. in this church when he wants to do it. Amen? Amen. Amen. And may I tell you, sir, yes. that in that parking lot, the church can be built on a parking lot attendant. Yes, it can. <laughs> Glory to God. So guess and how clean the bathrooms are. Oh, yes. Praise the Lord. All right. Well, let's go to this scripture so we can move on. Let me just give you a little capsule. If you weren't here at the word of his power, but let me ask by a show of hands, how many of you were here? How many of you were able to come to the word of his power conference? Raise your hand if that's you. Glory to God. Well, we're glad that you were here. Now, some of us couldn't make every meeting, but we hope that you were able to make as many as you could. And for those of you who aren't able to join us, and we understand sometimes there's reasons why. We un I, un I know how this works. Maybe you had certain responsibilities. You couldn't make it, but we hope that you were able to... Well, let me say it this way. We hope that you would consider getting the messages that were ministered here this past week on either CD or DVD. Because they are, as Pastor Jerry just said, they are for this church. You see, and then from this church... See, we're connected to the whole church, and then it spreads out, Okay. But you know, when God sends specific ministers in, there's a reason. He's ministering, not on, they're not ministering not only around the world, but they're ministering to the local group in preparation for what is about to take place. And here was the highlight, if I could give you the short highlights, just in maybe a sentence or a word that, that was ministered to us. I already briefly mentioned it. Pastor Bill Winston spoke on taking ownership. We've got to take ownership of our life in him. If you know what I mean. He's the boss. But he's also made us the boss in this earth. And we have to learn our responsibilities as we mature and grow. You see, our spiritual life is much like our natural life. We start out as a baby. That's why we don't give the keys to the Mercedes to the baby. Okay? The baby can't drive the Mercedes. The baby might think when it's about, well, actually, no baby really thinks like that, right? They might think they could drive the carriage, though. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Having a little fun there. Okay, here we go. But uh, ownership. So we've got to learn about ownership. And I believe what we're going to do in, in, as the Lord leads, I think we're going to be reviewing these messages over time so that we can get them deeply engrafted inside of us, deeply rooted inside of us. And then, but then, you know what amazed me? You know what absolutely amazed me? It amazed me when he said, see, you know, Sunday night he said, I'm going to speak on ownership. And then Monday morning he says, the Lord wants me to speak on prayer. 
to me, that was like, whoa. You know, because I wasn't, honestly, I wasn't expecting that. But then as he began to share the gospel and share the word, and the bottom line was, Lord, teach us to pray. You know, most of the body of Christ doesn't pray very long. I don't know if you know that or not. It's true. Statistics say that the, that the average Christian, if I could say it that way, only prays just a little bit every week. But God wants us to learn how to pray. Why? So we can pray in his will into the earth. And that's what this is all about. And I won't, ta- I won't go any longer than that. So he spoke on ownership. He spoke on prayer. And then Brother Jerry came in and said, I'm here to proclaim to you that this is the year of God's greater glory. That this is the, that the door has opened and the manifestations are going to be greater and greater and greater and greater. And so he taught us about the presence, about the glory of God. That it's the manifested presence of God. It's the manifested power of God. It's the manifested goodness of God. And I won't go into that in great detail. But then, let me say this, to connect the dots... He said an amazing statement that I'm not sure how many of us caught it, but he said an amazing statement in somewhere on day two or day three. He said, but did you know, now listen, he said, did you know that every great awakening, every great outpouring, every great manifestation of the Spirit was preceded by prayer? So God had Pastor Winston speak on ownership. Then he had him speak about prayer to tell us which way, that we have to be a praying church. Everybody say, a praying church. Amen. Say, we must be a praying church. Amen. Say, God has called his church called a praying church. Amen. He said, it is written, it is written. my house shall be called house shall be a, house called. a house of prayer. I'm calling words of life a house of prayer. I'm calling this temple a house of prayer. Be a praying Christian church. Number two, then we went on to the, uh, number three, Brother Copeland arrived. One of God's foremost prophets in in these last days. And and, uh, so thankful for the prophet's ministry. And of course, he opened up with Proverbs chapter four. So how are we going to find life in God? How are we going to find our life in Jesus Christ? How are we going to find healing and health for our life? How are we going to find prosperity in all the things that God has? By attending to his words, inclining our ear unto his sayings, letting them not depart from our eyes, keeping them in the midst of our heart. Why? For they are life unto those that find them and health or medicine to all their flesh. Pastor Stan always used to say, this is, Words of Life is going to be the healthiest church in town. Hallelujah. You know why it's going to be the healthiest church in town? And of course, God wants all of his churches to be healthy, so don't misunderstand what I'm saying, because Words of Life is going to attend to his words, incline our ears unto his sayings, let them not depart from our eyes. We are going to keep them in the midst of our heart. Why? For they are life unto those that find them. That means we are going to seek them. We are going to go looking for the word of God. We're going to be looking for your word today, Father. We're going to be looking, Father, and we're going to find your word and find your sayings. And when we do, we are finding life. For they are life. See, words of life, they are life unto those that find them. But in order to find something, what do you have to do? You have to go look for it. You got to seek for it. In other words, we got to read our Bibles, church. We got to get into the Word. We can't wait for the pastor to do it. We can't wait for the minister to do it. If we're going to grow and grow uh, like the Lord wants us to, not we have to learn ownership. We have to learn responsibility. See, with ownership comes responsibility how many of you know owners treat their car better as pastor bill winston said than somebody who rents a car it's true for the most part it's true i mean i know that you want to take care of the things that you rent and the thing we need to but there's just something about when you own it i think you just kind of wax it just a little bit more (laughs) <laughs> yeah, there's just something about that, you know. That's just in the natural. But that's, I'm getting off there and I want to get back on. Because it, and then oh, along those lines, let me go here to, and we'll, we'll wrap it up today. 
Uh, well, I see, have to be careful. I said we wrap. We're getting close to wrapping it up. Okay, <laughs> uh, but we're not going to go much longer. But anyways, let's just go to go to, to go to First Corinthians chapter twelve, verse eighteen. Because I want to, see, I want you to see this. Because you see. This is where we are, and this is where we're heading, and this is where we're going as the body of Christ here at Words of Life. We are one member of the body of Christ, universal. Can I say it that way? You know, every church is a member. Every, every believer is a member. And I'm going to say something, that the churches will unite in South Florida. And they, we will see the glory of God together in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let me, let me just read this real fast. Verse 18. But now, when? When? Now. When? When? I heard something really great by, I think it was Pastor Winston. I think he said, when you speak, or maybe it was Brother Copeland. He said, when you speak the word now, there's an update the moment you say that. Now means now. Right now, right now. See, just a moment ago, is the moment just is gone. But right now, but now hath God set the members. That's you, that's me, that's those watching by internet who are born again, who are in Christ Jesus. And that's what my, what, what, what my message is about today. It's about who we are in Christ and learning how to find out who we are in Christ. And I'm going to be talking about that, I think, you know, in the future here as the Lord leads. But it says here, But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body as it hath pleased Him. I have a question before we close. Are you in the body of Christ today? Yes. Raise your hand if you're in the body of Christ. Now, if you haven't raised your hand, if you see someone who hasn't raised their hand, just ask them if they've received Jesus yet. If they haven't, encourage them to do so. You know, there's a lot of Christians that don't even know they're in the body of Christ. Did you know that? Because they've never been taught. And that's another mis- message. But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body as it hath pleased him. So God, here's what I need to say, and I really want to get this across to you. I don't know how many are in this room. There's hundreds in this room this morning. But there is a place that he has set you in that belongs to you. He has a job. He has an assignment for everybody in this room. Some of you might, it might be, and and you know what? If I had time, I'd talk about this, but you can read about it. Go to Romans chapter 12 in your own personal study. Some of you are called to give. God has anointed you in the realm of giving. And so, obey Him and watch what He does. Now, we're all called to give, but some specifically have that ministry. And so, I simply say to you, Obey him. There are teachers in this room who need to teach our children. And I say to you, obey him. Now in the future, in the near future, and I don't know how this is all going to work because today I was actually going to minister. I had a a particular message that I had in, in, in mind for you this morning. But, but here's what I'm going to say. Obviously, God is calling us to the ministry of helps. He's saying, 
And let, let me tell you, say it to you this way. I need your help. You mean God has a need? Yeah. He needs you and me to obey him. He doesn't make us obey him. He asks us to obey him. It is a command, but again, he never violates the human will. The human will must say, yes, Lord. How many of you want to say yes to him in serving him? Would you rise with me this morning? We're going to say that before we go home. Say this with me. Say, Father God, God, thank you you. for who we are are. in Christ Jesus. Jesus. Thank you you. that our our life life. and our place place is in him. him. And in you, Lord, Lord. we we live, we move, And we have our being. being. Thank you, Lord. Lord. For having placed me. me At words of life. life. Thank you. you. For having placed me first of all. all. In your body. body. Help me. me To recognize. To know, to, know to, see, to see, to find, find my, place. my place. And with a willing heart, and, willing heart and, an mind, and an obedient mind, I say yes, Lord, say yes, Lord to your will, to your will as, we as we grow together at words of life. Words of life. Father, Father, your will be done. In us, us, as it is in heaven. heaven. Your will be done done in your church church. worldwide. Worldwide. Your will be done done in this church church. as it is in heaven. heaven. Your will be done done. in my family. As it is in heaven. Make us a blessing to the world and help us reach the unlovely, those who are called unreachable. Help us to reach every human being on the face of the earth. Now with heads bowed and eyes closed and no one looking around, if you're here today and, and, and you haven't yet made Jesus the Lord of your life, He wants to become the Lord of your life. And if you would just receive Him now by faith, your life will be transformed in Christ Jesus so with heads bowed and eyes closed and no one looking around if you're here today and you say Pastor Stan I need Jesus in my heart would you raise your hand if you would say I'm not born again but I want to be born again I'm looking ushers help me perhaps I'm speaking to all of words of life and if I am that's a good thing but we also want to always give an invitation to anyone who enters these doors to accept Christ into their heart. See, there is no life without Him. He is our life. And so I don't see any hands at this time, but I want you to raise your hand one more time. Wait, there is a hand? I see a hand. Okay, thank you, ushers. I'm going to ask that one who raised her hand to come forward, to come join me, come to the altar. Bring your personal items with you. Take that step of faith with us together. 
Take that step of faith. Let's give her a great big hand, everybody. Praise the Lord. And then I'm going to ask if there's anybody here who needs to come back to the Lord. If you find yourself in a place where you, you know you've missed it with God, and I'm just being honest, and you're being honest, you know you've missed it, and you, 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 you haven't been where you need to be, God wants you to come home so, and rededicate yourself to Him. If I'm speaking to you, come. And then I'm going to give a third invitation. If there's anyone here who needs to be filled with the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in tongues, then please come to the altar at this time because you see God wants you to be filled. Anybody else want to come and join? This young man's coming. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? You're saying, I, I, I should be up there. I should be up there. If you're not filled with the Holy Ghost, there's an invitation now for you to be filled with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Because you see, God not only wants us to be born of His Spirit, but He wants us to be filled with His Spirit. And this is all part of His glory and all part of the blessing that He has for us. Is there anybody else who would say, I need to come to be filled. I need to come to be filled. I need to come to be filled with the Holy Ghost. If I'm speaking to you, just come at this moment. Come at this moment. I don't see anybody else coming. So I'm so glad you all... Well, there might be some more coming. I always want to... Oh, come, come, come. Come, come, come. Come, come, come. That's what the Lord is saying. Come, come, come. Oh, I'm glad you came. I'm glad you came. Because you see, He has gifts for us. And He has a place for you. 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 You have always been in the Father's heart. You've always been in His heart. You have always been in His heart. He's not mad at us. He's not mad at you. He's not upset with you. He's, he loves you. And He has nothing but the best for you. And for everyone in this room. Aren't you glad God's not mad at us, church? Hallelujah. Let's lift our hands to heaven. Let's stretch them forth to those that are standing at the altar because we want to pray for you all, okay? You don't have to say a word. We just want to pray for you this morning. I would like the members of Words of Life, those that are in the congregation, to just stretch forth their hands to them and say, Father, thank you for those who have come to the altar to receive Jesus, to give their lives back to Him, to be filled with the Holy Ghost and enjoy your abundant blessings. Thank you for revealing to them who they are in Christ. Thank you for teaching them, Father, everything they need to know. And we pray for them now. And we surround them with faith and love and we pray that they receive every spiritual need met in Jesus name thank you for every gift that you have for them today and we pray they receive in Jesus name and everybody said amen we're going to send you now to that place of prayer with pastor marcus he's going to love on you and tell you all, all the good things you need to know let's give them a great big hand everybody come on my friend go go all right say this with me before we go this morning say in him, in him. we live, we live. And, move and move and have our being I am in Christ, and in Him I live and move and have my being. This week, Lord, I will move in You. This week, I live in You. This week, I have my being in You. And it's going to be like this the rest of my life. Because in you, I live and move and have my being. Make me a blessing to everyone I come in contact with. 
In Jesus' name. God bless you, everybody. Love on somebody. The altar is open to come and worship God. And help us build words of life. In Jesus' name.